Straight ahead on CCX News, could this be a banner year for local retailers? The average household is expected to spend more, but local businesses aren't taking any chances. Plus, a Minnesota first, a healing home for families facing the unthinkable for their children. And later, a picture-perfect ending. What you can expect at this weekend's Plymouth Arts Fair. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. You can almost hear the carols already. The holiday shopping <laughs> season is right around the corner. And there's good news for local retailers. According to a holiday spending survey conducted by the University of St. Thomas, 54% of Twin City shoppers plan to spend their money in traditional bricks and mortar stores, while 46% will do their holiday shopping online. However, small businesses know they still need to step up their efforts to draw in customers. We are going to welcome you, we're going to make friends with you, we will call our customers when new products arrive, and so we pretty much keep in touch with our customers all the time. Good Things is a Minnesota-based business at the shops at Arbor Lakes. Managers say they expect to do really well thanks to new products and devotion to customer service. The St. Thomas survey reports Minnesotans will spend at least $950 on holiday gifts and entertainment. But local businesses still know they need to compete with big box and online retailers. At Robbinsdale's Minnesota Makers, they say they have one distinct advantage. Things here are unique, often one of a kind, um, made here by people in Minnesota. So the, uh, the whole shop local, I mean, this is, this is what shop local is about. The survey also reports that Minnesotans are procrastinators. Only 13% of us shop before Thanksgiving, while the majority of us hold off until December or even January. Well, finding holiday help won't get any easier. New jobs numbers released today shows Minnesota's unemployment rate fell to 3.3% in October, and that's the lowest level in 17 years. The sector that gained the most jobs last month, leisure and hospitality. Well, students at the Robbinsdale Adult Academic Program are hoping to forge a path to a future career. The program helps improve English and math skills to get ready for college or a career. Reporter Sonia Gowen shows us what they did today to get them closer to a successful future. For many of these adult learners, this is the first time they've stepped foot inside a manufacturing company. About 36 students participated in the field trip. One of the venues was at Randy's Booth in Crystal. We're a custom manufacturer of uh, hospitality seating. The adult students stopped by each workstation learning about what goes into making handmade furniture. It's good to show students a trade and how to build things and do things with their hands. Companies like Randy's Booth say they have a hard time finding skilled employees. Upholstery is kind of a dying trade, so it's good to show people about upholstery and learn um, how to upholster. The adult academic program is located in Crystal. Organizers chose businesses in the same city because of transportation concerns. Our students come from all over the Northwest region, but because they can get to our school, we know they could get to businesses in Crystal as well. Randy's booth just moved to Crystal two months ago, and there are about 25 employees. However, they're looking to add more. Some students on the tour say they're ready to put in an application. This is a good experience for the first time to be around, seeing a lot of companies, producing chairs and then producing materials for house. Students and local companies say this is a win-win for everyone. It's a good opportunity to, to get them together and be able to find out about each other and help improve the possibilities for our students to get jobs and for the employers to find the skills that they need. In Crystal, Sonia Goins, CCX News. In other news, over the next several weeks, dogs and puppies rescued from unsanitary conditions in southwest Minnesota will be ready for adoption in Golden Valley. The Animal Humane Society took in more than 100 abandoned dogs, many of them needing urgent medical and behavioral care. They say it was one of their biggest animal rescues over the last few years. Everybody. Our average length of stay for a dog coming in shelter to being adopted is about 10 days. That's usually how quickly they move through and a lot of these guys have been here for a month but we need the puppies to be at least six weeks old, sometimes eight weeks old to be sterilized uh, and then be ready to go home to be adopted. The Animal Humane Society also partnered with other rescue groups to help those dogs with the most extreme behavioral challenges. 
In Brooklyn Center, a rare but much needed facility for children opened its doors. Crescent Cove on Twin Lakes in Brooklyn Center is a hospice home for kids. Now, as Shannon Slatten reports, it's the first of its kind in the Midwest. Today is here. Today capped off a monumental nine-year journey to found and open Crescent Cove, a respite and hospice home for children. We know that families don't want to have to have a home like this, but if they need it, it will be here. Katie Lindenfelser, who lives in Crystal, is the founder and force behind Crescent Cove. I'm a music therapist and spent so many days with families who had children who were at the end of life in the hospital and also at home asking for a home like this. But it wasn't an easy journey because there are no hospice homes for children in Minnesota. Oh my goodness. Money had to be raised, legislation had to be passed. The only option you had for any kind of hospice care was within an adult hospice care setting and it just not appropriate for a child to be there and let the family be around other families and let the children be around other children. Three, two, then the nonprofit got a chance to buy this Brooklyn Center property, which used to be a hospice home for adults. I'm from St. Michael and now live in Crystal and grew up coming to this area because my dad owns Hackey Miller Meats in Robbinsdale. And so we always have known of this home and the, the beauty that's here when North Memorial owned it. So it was just such an amazing miracle, really, that it was for sale and that it came to be for Crescent Cove. This building has been almost completely refurbished to appeal to children. Many of the rooms like this one have spaces for them to play. As Levi's mom, as a Crescent Cove family, I know firsthand the joy, the compassion, and the meaningful support that Crescent Cove has been bringing to our community for years. Danelle Shu lost her son Levi in February and spoke about the difference Crescent Cove services made in their family's life and how this place will impact families in the years to come. Crescent Cove was by our side, relieving our suffering, bringing us meaningful, compassionate support, and yes, even helping to make his life and his death beautiful. In Brooklyn Center, Shannon Slatten, CCX News. Crescent Cove hopes to open up to families starting in January. And you may have noticed in the crowd, Paul Molitor and a few Minnesota Twins personnel in the audience. The Harmon Killebrew Foundation, along with many others, made important donations to Crescent Cove. On this Give to the Max Day, when nonprofits benefit from donations, Plymouth-based Interfaith Outreach and Community Partners is kicking off its biggest fundraiser. The annual Sleepout starts on Saturday, and these are pictures from past sleepouts when hundreds of teens and members of faith communities pitch a tent or sleep in a box to raise money and awareness for the needs of 2,000 struggling local families. One in five families is experiencing homelessness that we're seeing. And, um, and so this sleep out really helps us address those emergency needs, keep people in their housing, and address the underlying issues that led to their instability. This year's goal is to raise $2.3 million. The kickoff is tonight, that's Thursday evening, from 5 to 7 at Wyzetta Brew Works. One dollar of every beverage purchased goes to Interfaith Outreach. Still ahead, we visit Meadowbrook Elementary School in Golden Valley for today's school spotlight. Plus, the Wysetta girls hockey team has some young talent as they look to rebound from a tough season last winter. But first, the winds pick up with possible rain showers coming on Friday. We'll be right back. In today's School Spotlight, we visit Meadowbrook Elementary in Golden Valley. As Eric Nelson reports, Meadowbrook is a K-6 through school with some unique approaches to learning. Our teachers are highly skilled. Our families come to us, half of them are open enrolled and half of them come from the neighborhood, so people have choose to come here. Inside the walls of Meadowbrook Elementary School, Kids and teachers are doing special things. It's a great place to be, wonderful place for learning. Meadowbrook has a unique approach to education. Flexible learning spaces make classrooms feel larger and improve the school experience. There are high tables and low tables and stand-up desks and regular sit-down desks, a few, and some no desks. They might be in a scoop chair or on a rug with a clipboard. I think it gives kids more freedom to like sit where they want instead of just sitting at a normal desk where your legs are crammed under it. Like other schools, there is a heavy focus on ABCs and 123s. But 
At Meadowbrook, there is also an emphasis on other things, such as staying active with periodic brain breaks. The more exercise they get, the more blood goes to their brain, and so that the better they can think. We also have calming breaks. They might do some yoga. Another key part of a Meadowbrook day is nutrition. Eating right is something these kids learn early. They make the food here. They make it from scratch. If it's um, pasta, it's a whole grain pasta. For example, the marinara sauce, they brought in the tomatoes and one day they were just roasting the tomatoes, making marinara. They froze it in cubes and that's the marinara sauce they're using for the whole rest of the school year. Yeah, we have great school lunches, like they have meatless Mondays. They give out like fresh salads from the um, garden that we have here. Meadowbrook students are taught to give back and hold an annual service night. It's a great event. This year's event will aid a variety of charitable groups. They might be making blankets for an animal shelter. They'll be uh, sorting diapers for PRISM or measuring laundry detergent to go to PRISM. I like to give back to the community because they've given so much to me like giving back to animal shelters, helping people that need help. It's, it's a great night. Meadowbrook teacher Chuck Burmeister has a special passion for the school. Nothing changed during the afternoon, although it seemed to get even hotter. As a former Meadowbrook student, he learned to read in these classrooms and now is reading to his class. It's been a real pleasure for me to be here for 27 years. It has gone so fast and part of that is just working with great kids. Burmeister is personally and emotionally invested in Meadowbrook and its history. He has a connection and perspective that not all teachers have. Being here as a student, I know this building in and out. Um, and then I come here as an adult, I can smell the same smells. Um, you know, the, the building itself hasn't changed that much. In Golden Valley, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. And the building will change too. Meadowbrook will soon add another wing to accommodate future growth. Still ahead, a preview of this weekend's Plymouth Arts Fair. But first, a new youth wrestling club for kids in the Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center area. John Jacobson has the details next in sports. I'm John Jacobson with sports. One week after their one-minute miracle game, the Maple Grove football team takes the field tonight, Thursday, in the warmth of U.S. Bank Stadium. The Crimson team has been practicing indoors all week at the Maple Grove Dome in preparation for their game against top-ranked Eden Prairie. Eagles beat the Crimson 28-7 back on September 28th. Unlike last week, CCX Media is not able to televise tonight's game due to State High School League television and web streaming restrictions. We will have highlights and and reaction though from the Crimson Friday starting at four here on CCX News. The White Center girls hockey team returns a lot of its players this season and is aiming to improve on last year's 10 and 17 record. Here's Jason Malillo with a preview of the Trojans. The Wyzetta girls hockey team isn't dwelling on last year's losing record. Instead, second year head coach Jessica Christofferson and her players are focused on what they did well and how to apply that to this season. Probably the biggest thing for me was we played arguably the toughest schedule in the state last year. So when you're getting beat, you know, 3-1 to one to Hill Murray or 2-0, 3-0 zero, zero to Edina, I mean, those, those aren't losses in every sense of the word. And, and for a team like ours that was young and extremely inexperienced, uh, we grew a lot. I just think knowledge of the game, speed, um, expectations. I mean, now there's no, you can't say that, oh, we didn't know. Well, we played every team. We know what to expect. We know what we have to bring into every game. The Trojans should be deep and skilled on defense with senior Annika Swanson and junior Emily Wisniewski leading the way. I think that we work well as a core and I think it's important to start strong in the defensive zone and then you can start working on offensive stuff so I think that will go well for our season. We have um, five returners and we all have like different skills but we all contribute and we have a new eighth grader and she's amazing so I think we're going to have a really good decor this year and for goalies also. A big focus for Wyzetta this season is to be better in conference play. The Trojans went one and seven last year in the Lake, which is arguably the best conference in the state. Jason Malillo, CCX Sports. Wyzetta is 0-1 so far this season and plays St. Cloud tonight at 6 p.m. at the Coon Rapids Ice Center. The Plymouth Ice Center is being used this week for a national sled hockey tournament. Young wrestlers have a new spot to learn the sport in Brooklyn Park. Here's Jay Wilcox with more on a new wrestling club. 
There's plenty of enthusiasm and energy at the new Pirate Wrestling Club. After many years without a dedicated youth program in the Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center area, Park Center High School coach Justin Miller and his staff are getting kids on the mat. Park Center in this area has struggled for a long time with our participation numbers in wrestling at the high school level and so the, uh, the most obvious step for us was to uh, try and get a youth club going. So sometime last year we, um, in the spring we, we started putting the plans together. We started with a, uh, an eight week session in the spring just to test it out. Over the summer and this fall we really worked on uh, you know, obviously getting the plans together, doing all the organizing. And so this is the first um, uh, folk style, youth folk style season um, here out of Park Center in about 30 years. Pirate Wrestling Club is for kids pre-K through sixth grade. And most of the young guys have never wrestled before. The turnout has been promising. Yeah, so we're about two weeks in now. Um, we've got about 25 kids and, you know, we're keeping registration open for a few weeks. So, you know, we're expecting uh, more kids to keep showing up. High school wrestlers from Park Center are helping out as coaches and it's been good for them too. It lightens our hearts to see that they're having fun and that they're learning stuff and it personally makes me feel better. Getting kids introduced to wrestling and getting them plenty of exercise is a good thing and Coach Miller also isn't shy about saying this is meant to help the high school program in the long run too. Uh, obviously for competitive reasons, you know, um, we, we, want, we want to create a winning culture, but you know, we want kids to be affected. Uh, we want life change in, in, in kids uh, in teenagers because of this sport, and we, we really believe that that's what will happen. It's in its early stages, but the Pirate Wrestling Club is off to a solid start. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Pirate Wrestling Club is held Monday and Wednesday evenings. You can still sign up. Visit piratewrestling.org for more information. And we'll be right back. Well, finally, a chance to support local artists and possibly get an early start on some holiday shopping. Yeah, it's really shop local. The sixth annual Plymouth Arts Fair is this weekend at the Plymouth Creek Center. It includes original paintings, photography, and pottery done by more than 50 Minnesota artists. It's also a rare chance to meet the artist who did the work. This event, we really do try to focus on fine artists participating. Um, so it's not a craft show, it is more fine art. Um, so they are really high caliber artists that are participating in the event. The art fair starts Saturday morning and mission is free. And that's all the news for us. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll see you back here again on Friday, starting at four.